All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about energy methods, which is an important uh, PDE method that's used. So in PDEs, there are really two kinds of methods, energy methods or maximum principle methods. And it really depends what you're trying to solve to see which method you're using. And you may have seen my video that I've already done on the heat equation, but today I want to present a version for the wave equation because it's actually slightly different and still very interesting. So here's a problem we want to solve today. Suppose you have the wave equation, UTT equals to C squared UXX, but let's say in the finite case, so let's say a wave of finite length, so from zero to L, and moreover, we say that in the, on the endpoints, we assume the wave is zero. So it always looks like that. Think of like fixing a wave at zero. So I think u of zero uh, t equals zero, and u of l t equals zero. And initially, the wave is zero. And initially, the speed is zero. So again, we're fixing the wave at zero. It starts with nothing, and we're literally doing nothing to the wave. Well, it turns out the only solution of this is the zero function. Okay, uh, so in other words, u x t is zero for all x and t. And by the way, if you're my student and you're watching this, well, in lecture, I did the infinite case, but this is actually better because it's it's not hand wavy with the boundary conditions. Here, we actually have very clear cut ones. So, what is the energy method? Again, what you want to do you to your equation, energy method is basically, you want to multiply by a clever function and integrate. And by the way, when do you want to use energy methods? Whenever you want to have some n integral estimates. So integrals are good with energy methods. Pointwise stuff is good with the maximum principle. So here we'll see the wave equation. It's nice with the energy method. In fact, because the wave equation does not have a maximum principle, so you can't really use that on that. And before what we did for the heat equation, we multiplied it by u. But it turns out here, it's actually nicer to multiply by ut. And you will see why. Okay, and because we have an even better estimate. And then for the rest, we'll just rewrite this. We integrate from 0 to L with respect to x, and we integrate from 0 to L with respect to x. And all we want to do is have some fun. And in addition, we want to add, you know, rewrite the terms A and B. So the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Because what's interesting is we'll get a sort of conservation of energy. So for A, what do we have? Notice UT, UT, T, UT. That's like Y double prime, Y prime. We can write this as just one derivative. It's d over dt ut squared with the half. Because if you differentiate that, you get 2 u ut, 2 ut utt, and then you multiply this by 1 half to just get ut utt. And therefore, the integral I wonder if in Dutch they say integral. That's just such an amazing word. Anyway, I hope that's true. But the, la the left point then becomes in U the integral, sorry, of ut, utt, then becomes basically the integral from 0 to L of 1 half d over dt ut squared dx, and well, you see, we're integrating with respect to x, so differentiating with respect to t doesn't really matter. So this becomes d over dt of 1 half 
integral from 0 to L ut squared dx. So that's kind of half of the energy. So uh, I mean, literally half, but really what I mean is one part of the energy. Then for the right hand side, what you do, you integrate by parts. In this case, we had x, therefore you integrate by parts with respect to x. And what do we get? So we get integral from 0 to L, uh, c squared, uxx, ut, dx, and that becomes, so you integrate with respect to x, so you put this one here, and therefore you get the minus c squared, oh, I forgot the boundary terms, very important, so c squared, ux, uh, let's see, uh, lt, and then ut, lt, minus ux, 0t, ut, 0t, and now minus the integral from 0 to l of uh, ux, and then utx. You see, we lift it by a derivative of x, and we put the x derivative here. That's why this is good. And now let's look at the boundary terms. So unfortunately, we don't know if ux is 0 at the boundary. But remember, we do know the following. We do know that u of uh, 0t, it's 0. So you see, for every time t, u at the left endpoint is 0. So again, if you plotted time worth as a function, the function is always 0. In particular, if you differentiate that with respect to t, you actually still get 0. So ut 0t, that is 0, t, and that's 0. And careful, you can't do this with x because we don't know how x changes. We just know it's constant with respect to t. So what you know, in fact, is that this term is 0. So like Legend of Zelda, you just kill it off. And also, similarly, this term is 0. So indeed, the boundary terms are 0, and that's good. And lastly, what about this term? Well, notice ux, u if you want xt, that's also a time derivative, that's one half d over dt ux squared. Because if you differentiate that, you get two times one half, and then ux, uxt. So really what you're left with is minus c squared, again one half d over dt, and the integral from 0 to L of ux squared dx. And again, what I did, I took this 1 half d over dt and pulled it out. Now, last but not least, what do we have? We have a equals b. So d over dt of that equals this minus c squared 1 half d over dt. A equals B implies D over DT of one half integral from zero to L UT squared DX equals minus C squared one half D over DT integral from zero to L of UX squared DX. You pull everything on the left-hand side. So d over dt of 1 half integral from 0 to L ut squared dx plus 1 half c squared integral 0 to L ux squared dx. You find that this is 0. And 
Why is this called an energy method? Because it turns out this is a sort of an energy. Uh, it is an energy in physics. So if you let E to be that, so define ET to be one half of UT squared and then one half of C squared, UX squared. This thing, so if E of t, it's one half of this chunk, so integral from zero to t, u t squared plus c squared u x squared dx. Again, that's technically at x comma t. Then what we know is that the energy, so the derivative of the energy is zero. So in particular, the energy is constant. And in fact, that's what's called the conservation of energy. And um, I, can't, I haven't taken physics in 13 years now. It's my new uh, jubileum, like a celebration. <laughs> but uh, from what I remember, this is one of the two, but I believe this should be, it's called the kinetic energy, one half mass times speed squared, so ut squared. This apparently is a potential energy. And what this is saying is that the sum of the kinetic and the potential energy is constant, just like a conservation of energy in physics. Okay, anyway, what does conservation of energy mean? It means in particular the energy at time t is the same as the energy at time zero. So what this is saying is that one half integral from zero to L ut xt squared plus c squared ux xt squared dx equals one half times integral from 0 to L, ut x0 squared plus c squared ux x0 squared dx. And there's one, actually two conditions we haven't used yet, which are the initial conditions. So remember that this is the initial velocity. We assume that it's 0. And well, for here, although we don't know that the initial position is, uh, although we don't know that ux is zero, we know that u initially is zero, and that's for all x. So differentiating this, we get ux x zero is zero x, and that's zero. So in fact, this is also zero. And so what this is telling us, it tells us that the energy here is actually equal to zero. On the other hand, those are all like non-negative terms. So the only way the sum of squares could be zero is if ut is identically equal zero and ux is identically equal zero. Almost everywhere, but we assume it's continuous, so indeed everywhere. And lastly, what is that saying? Well, it says that u is constant. But in particular, what is that constant? Well, if you plug in t equals zero, then we get the constant is ux zero, but we know ux zero is zero. So the constant is zero, and therefore ux t, which is that constant, which is zero. So we do have that you start with the wave equation, the boundary conditions are zero and the initial data is zero, then this only has a zero solution. And of course, as a consequence, just like the other video, we get uniqueness of solutions to the wave equation. So if u and v somehow solve utt equals c squared uxx, if you want plus some inhomogeneous term with uh, initial data, let's say phi of x, initial velocity, psi of x, and the other one, so u of 0 t is g of t, u t of 0 t 
sorry, uh, yeah, no, sorry, u of lt, it's uh, h of t, then in fact we get u is identically equal to v, and that's by defining w to be u minus v, it solves a homogeneous wave equation with zero boundary data, and we get by our claim that this is zero, so u equals v. So that makes sense. And by the way, so if you like linear algebra, what I studied, the, the equation at the beginning, it's the, uh, from the kernel of our linear operator, which is the PDE. So it's the analog of AX equals zero. And this says that, you know, if AX equals zero only as a trivial solution, then AX equals B must have at most one solution. And that is true. PDs and in linear algebra. Uh, all right, I hope you like this glimpse of energy methods. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.